a little bit more awake, some Christmas shopping done, and a little bit more of a topic the Oilers fans have some interest in from an Edmonton Oilers YouTube fan perspective. My friends, welcome aboard. This is Dolany TV, and we're talking Max Domi this time out, okay? So, of course, this is something that you can do as an Oilers YouTuber is check out your comments day in, day out, and see what the trends are. Now, here's the trend of the past couple of days. Since Patrick posted, I think, like four or five days ago, his video on Max Domi, the first one, not the one from yesterday, the first one before Kevin Weeks had talked about Max Domi, is now you are all of a sudden talking about a player that has grit, scoring ability, and really that playoff pedigree that teams are looking for in terms of what Zach Kazian should have been for the Oilers at $3.2 million. So here we go, right? A big time situation for the Oilers now in which that uh, they are appearing to be looking at Max Domi. And we will talk about that here in a matter of moments. But folks, before we get to that, if you're enjoying today's topic at all during the video, leave a like on the video and secondary too. If you're new to the channel, Oilers fans specifically, but any NHL fans in general, or just hockey fans, if you want to hit that subscribe button here on Dolan TV, I'd be grateful to have you along for the rest of the Oilers season as we talk Oilers hockey all throughout this season. We're already 25 games in and there's been a heck of a lot to talk about and I'd love to keep doing as such with you throughout the season. So as we get rolling on this Max Domi video here today, I've already noted the biggest thing, right? This is something Oilers fans want to hear. Guys like Patrick and I, guys like Ryan Rashog, who's got your back podcast, guys like obviously the DFO rundown with Frank Saravelli and Jason Greger, the Oilers nation to a degree. Everybody wants to hear us talking about Max Domi. Why? Simply because... Right now, the big piece for the Oilers that's missing is that skilled grit is the term that's been kind of thrown out there. And Max Domi, a bit more expensive than maybe a bottom six grit player like Zach McEwen, who we could easily do a video on as well here shortly this week. And I am sure at some point I'm going to have to, whether the Oilers trade for him straight up or whether it just evolves into that at some point down the road. But for Max Domi, he is that perfect combination of what the Oilers need to be looking for, right? He's got that little bit of nastiness to his game. He's got that good scoring skill. Obviously, we saw that on the Chicago game when back on Wednesday. So there's a little bit of intrigue there, especially once the Oilers are interested, according to Kevin Weeks, in said player Max Domi. So that's a big-time thing. And I think the real nifty part here is... What, what I try to do with these videos is try not to necessarily go and lean in on what Patrick's already said. I try to go out there and kind of explore this a little bit myself before leaning in on what he said. So if you ever kind of look at these trade videos after Patrick's covered something or after I've covered and he's covered, it's just kind of I try to take a completely sober opinion on a player that I haven't talked about at all this season and go out there and do it and see what I can figure out for you guys and see what it matches in the Oilers realm after the fact and I think the biggest thing I could say about Max Domi right now is he's a good fit he's a perfect fit because he is that combination of what you need right for the Oilers they need the grit they need the scoring ability whether it be on the third line or on the second line I mean Max Domi you could put him up there with Connor McDavid and he's probably going to do just fine anyway so there's a couple of things there for the Oilers that could really work out for them if they choose to go the Max Domi route, right? Obviously, we talk about heads in the clouds like Jonathan Taves, Brock Besser, Patrick Kane, and then we also talk about guys like Zach McEwen, uh, Zach Sanford, and Lawson Krause from the Arizona Coyotes. So you got like, you got three guys on either side, but here in the middle, and this is the really interesting part for the Oilers, here in the middle, there's very limited options that are actually going to work for them. And Max Domi is that kind of guy that takes a little bit over here, a little bit over here, and really nails together both sides of the coin that the Edmonton Oilers are looking for in their lineup. And obviously, too, you look at it from this perspective of, okay, the Oilers would have to give up something to get Max Domi. And that's where we will now transition over to, here we go, hear me out, friends, we'll transition over to Cap Friendly, where we will get Max Domi's contract, we'll figure out what we have to do there, and get that all sorted out. 
But for the Oilers now, it's a question of how do you make it happen? How do you afford it? How do you uh, work it all out, right? And for Max Domi right now, the big thing for him is he's making $3 million this season. Here's the thing. One-year contract, $3 million. Can you not throw Warren Fogle at the problem? Can you not throw Yes Puliarvi at the problem? Can you not throw Kyler Yamamoto at the problem? And probably not have to give up too, too much else? Yes, Yes, you absolutely can. This is the thing, right? Max Domi is a great player in his own right. He's a fantastic hockey player, obviously. Draft pedigree is up there 12th overall way back when. And secondary, too, he's Ty Domi's son. But when it comes down to it for the Oilers, is you're talking about Max Domi, who is on team number five in his career already, right? Coyotes for a couple years, Canadians for a couple years. Blue Jackets for two years, and then you've got, yes, the Carolina Hurricanes last year too, and now the Chicago Blackhawks. And the best season Max Domi ever had was 72 points in 82 games, but he has never touched over 50 ever again. So that's where for the Oilers, right, you're scooping up a guy who really has not produced too, too much substantially in sustained offense for you, especially in the goal scoring department. This is pacing to be his best goal scoring season since that 72-point campaign in 1819 with the Montreal Canadiens. He's already got nine this year, right? He got that goal against us the other night. So for Max Domi, 19 points in 23 games. And for the Chicago Blackhawks, who are looking to rebuild, and obviously this is exactly what the plan was, I think, with Max Domi, is take a positive risk on a guy that's going to allow you to go out there and generate some uh, great pieces for your team at the trade deadline or sooner. And this is one of those deals, right? You talk about a Kane, you talk about a Taves, you talk about a Besser. Those deals are trade deadline deals at best for the Oilers if they even happen. Those are those where all in deals where you have to go out and make some kind of big splash that says we're all in. Those are the guys you're going after. A Zach McEwen, he's probably a deadline pickup that you're making to better your team, right? A Zach Sanford, a Lawson Crow, same kinds of deals there. But again, the bigger thing is Max Domi is kind of one of those guys that I think comes in way earlier than the trade deadline if indeed you want to make that trade, right? Zach McEwen's the kind of guy that it it doesn't change anything substantially for you immediately if you trade for him today, tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, right? Those kinds of players, they... They come and go and we'll be upset with them in a month's time if we trade for him today kind of deal. And then in the playoffs, we'll love or hate him and it'll be what it'll be. Whereas Max Domi is an immediate impact player that when you plug him into this Oilers lineup, works in so many facets of the game that all of a sudden you're just, right? It's an, it's an Evander Kane pickup 2.0 kind of deal. Is You can make that trade deadline acquisition earlier than expected and it actually benefits your team for that much longer. And that's where for the Oilers, right, if you give up Pugliarv, you give up Yamamoto, you give up Fogel, heck, you give up Tyson Berry and try and figure out the defense somewhere else, is there's, there's ways that Max Domi fits in that solves two problems at once, right? If you give up Pugliarv, you're giving up an offensive generator that makes sure the pucks stay alive. Well, Max Domi, he's got that offensive upside to his game and also that physicality that pugliarvi has been bringing this year. That should equal that out, no problem. Yamamoto, same thing. Fogel, same thing. So you're you're really not losing too much on either side of the coin. And I just want to quickly see what we've got from um, HockeyReference.com. And you see, all of a sudden, I'm spending a little bit more time on this one than I think I did on the Besser or any of the previous ones, even the Bo Horvat or any of that, simply because this one is one of them that makes a lot of sense, right? I said... This is one that isn't a fantasy at the trade deadline because you're all in. This isn't, uh, oh, okay, this move just offsets this problem. This is a problem solver player for the Edmonton Oilers. And that's the big part right here, right? Max Domi, sorry, had two goals on November 30th. My bad. So he's had two-ninths of his NHL goals this season against the Edmonton Oilers. Hey, what do I know? Who am I talking to here? But for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, here's Max Domi who, um, if they had time on ice here, they do not, unfortunately, in the NHL, extra stats. That's unfortunate. Let me see if I can go to um, Hockey References shorthanded stage here. And again, still doesn't have time on ice metrics here. 
Rate metrics, is there anything here for let's go to just goals per sixty. So he's averaging a buck point three goals per sixty for Max Domi, that's not a bad situation. Seven shots per sixty minutes of ice time. And a guy who generates offensive goals four per sixty, well, on ice goals four, about four. So if he plays fifteen minutes a night, his line's getting a goal every single time. He offsets that with a two point seven um goals against per 60 so one goal every 20 minutes and then of course he four percentage per 60 is out there battling pretty good 53.1 but the course he against percentage is 58.3 for a negative 5.2 which is actually one of the worst is the worst of his career currently so you got to remember though he's playing on the chicago blackhawks and that just is what it is i'm just trying to read through the stats and see if there's really anything here that we need to know expected goals for so far this season max domi's actually been really bad in the possession quality so far in a negative 4.2 it's still not the worst of his career in fact it is the like fourth or fifth best of his career so we're not minding that at all let me just see if i can get the time on ice here metrics that i'm looking for i really can't seem to find something but i just want to see if i can find right now he's playing 1832 per night with Chicago Blackhawks. I just can't find the um, shorthanded time on ice for um, Max Domi here. That's something I really want to try and get for you to explain what I'm doing here, but I can't figure that out. So folks, we'll have to wait and find out. Again, I don't watch the Chicago Blackhawks at all, so that just is what it is. Unfortunately, we'll... Uh, We'll make do with that, and I won't worry too much about hanging you up too, too much more. I've already kept you for 12 minutes. I'm sorry for yammering on and losing myself there. I think I know Hockey Dash reference better than that, but I lost myself. Either way, right? Problem solver player, kind of guy that goes out there and gets the job done immediately for the Oilers in multiple categories and immediately makes an impact. So that's where we're sitting with Max Domi. I think there's a great asset to be added there. And that's, of course, why I'm sure you've seen Patrick talk about him twice in the past week. And now you see me here talking about it today. Folks, if you're new to Dolany TV and you stuck with me throughout that weird little gap there at the last two minutes of this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're new, leave a like on the video if you haven't already. And if you don't have notifications enabled, helps you get live streams, helps you get videos quicker. I'd love to have you along for the rest of the NHL season. That's my pitch. I am up on out of here.